Hi, my name is Veronica, and this evening we're going to take a journey about the Uganda matters. We're going to know who they were, what they did, what happened before they were killed. And with me, I have Ben Tenua, in charge of the Uganda Matters Pilgrim's Office at the Uganda Matters Catholic Shrine, Namgongo. As a background, who were these matters and what did they do? The Uganda Matters were all workers, were servants, working for the King of Uganda. Uganda is the whole of central Uganda. So each family you select a very hard working boy, well disciplined, to go and work for a king, free of charge. It was a sign of showing royalty to the king, and it was very prestigious to work for a king. Even just the king to know you by name. So the majority of the workers, I mean the martyrs, were from Uganda Kingdom. Some came from Eastern region, Eastern Uganda. Some came from Western Uganda. So they all work. They were all pages, page workers working for the Kabaka of Uganda. So how many were they? The Uganda martyrs were 45. There were 22 Catholics, 20. Three Protestants, so in total 45. But we also had the Muslim martyrs between 70 and 100. So the Christian martyrs were 45. The Muslim martyrs were between 70 and 100. And then we had also traditional martyrs. So tell me, what happened before they were killed? The martyrs of Uganda, before they were killed, the king accused them of many, they were accused of many cases. In the first place, these people were servants, they were pages working for the king of Uganda. But on Sunday, they were not working, they were going for prayers. And the king thought they were becoming disobedient. And disobeying a king who was almost good here was a capital offense. It was enough to make you die. So that was, uh, they were accused of being disobedient, that was offense number one. They also accused of being rebels. Because you see, the way they were praying, let your kingdom come. When they are saying all of this prayer, the king thought, which kingdom is that? I'm the king. How can they say their king is in heaven? We regarded them as rebels. And the prison was punishable by death. They also are the, the Arabs were the first foreigners here. They were spreading Islam alongside slave trade. And now, when the Christianity came, because of that bit of slave trade, people started leaving Islam to join Christianity. Now the Arabs saw Christians as a threat to their existence. So they start, they start telling the king lies. That those people are going to overthrow you. It is just a matter of time. You better kill them. Another reason, the king had a prime minister. We locally call him Katikiru. His name was Mukasa. The prime minister, Mukasa, got scared of the new converts, especially Joseph Mukasa, but he could then. Because he thought the king might appoint Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe to become a prime minister and he loses the position. Because of that, the prime minister was influencing the younger king to kill the Christians. Not only that, Christianity preached against witchcraft. People stopped going to the witch doctors to get solutions for their problems. Now the witch doctors lost the market. They also started influencing the younger king to kill. The king had a house, a palace, a house of grass, the main house. It got burnt by gunpowder given to him by the explorers. And the house of the prime minister, the Katikiro, the Katikiro also got burnt by thunder. It was raining, thunder struck after two days and burnt the house of the Katikiro. So the king became scared. What's the problem? He went to consult the fortunate elders. Why is my palace burnt? Why is the Katikiro's palace burnt? They told him the problem is with Christians. 
Christians are no longer worshiping our gods. Our god is annoyed, that's why they burnt your palace. What you do kill these Christians. The king took the advice seriously. He used to go for fishing, hunting, they were supposed to receive him. Some days he was coming back home. When they are not there, they have gone for prayers, for catechism, for religious instructions. Now he thought they have shifted their loyalty, their new faith. Yet they were supposed to be loyal to the king all the time. He accused them of being disloyal. Now the king in Samaria was influenced by the Arabs, by the witch doctors, by the prime minister. So when he came and he consulted his chiefs, what should we do? These people said their king is in heaven. They call me their brother. My palace is burnt. I've been told they are the trouble causers. And they are no longer loyal to me. What should we do? The chief said, we gave you those boys when they were good. They have been spoiled by the missionaries. If you want to kill, kill. We shall give you your boys. Now after getting the approval of his chiefs to kill the Christians, the following day the king went to hunt hippos. Lake Victoria, at Munyonyo. He entered the road day, he got nothing, never got any hippo. So he came back in the evening, very annoyed. Late in the evening, he came back to his palace at Munyonyo. When he came back, he found a witch doctor waiting for him. He used to give him meat, so this time the king came back with nothing. And these people, we are not there to receive him. Because whenever the king used to go for fishing, hunting, these pages were supposed to receive him. Some days, now on that fateful day, after having a fruitless hunting of hippos, he came back in the evening. They were not there to be seen. They had gone for prayers. And he found a witch doctor waiting for him to give him meat. Because he used to give him meat whenever he used to go for hunting. So this time the king came back with nothing. He told him, I have got nothing to give you. I have hunted all day, I have got nothing. Even my gun fell in the lake. Look, doctor said, how? A whole king like you, to hunt the whole day, and you get nothing? The Christians. The Christians are the trouble causers. Now the god of the lake, God Mukasa, is annoyed. He has hidden the hippos under the lake. That's why I've got nothing. Why don't you kill these people? Now that man poisoned the mind of the king, that witch doctor. As they were still talking, two Christians arrived. Then a Sebugwao and Muwafu. Muwafu did not die as a Christian, but then they died as a Christian. So when the king saw them, he stopped them. Where are you coming from? From the church. Doing what? We have been attending religious instruction. Why don't I give you here? What you eat from those white men? Now Uganda is no longer mine. Buganda is for those white men. The meat I give you is not enough. The snakes you eat from those white men are better than the food I give you. The king became so furious. He just got one of the spears. He had the hand speared. Then a sebugwao in the ribs. The spear got broken. He gave him to the kid as finished him. Entered into the inner circle of his palace. He slapped those who got on the way. Then he said, all of you, come. Christian is over the fence. Those who are not Christians, come near me. The Christians came forward and told the king, we are Christians. If you want to kill us, kill us. We are not living Christianity. So there and then three were killed. Then they were speared. Andrew Kagwa. Then they said, Gwao. And the post, they just cut off their hands. And left them there for the vultures to eat. The rest were tied properly and told them, take them to Namugongo and burn them alive. So they tied, they walked, they looked in Owino Market. Nachivo place, they stopped. They asked the prisoners who wants to be killed here. Where we killed Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe. You remember? Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe was the first Catholic martyr to be killed on 15th of November 1885. And now where they killed him, there is a market called St. Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe Market. So when they reached there, they, they stopped. And now they asked the prisoners who wants to be killed here. Baze Koketa said, here I am. They speared him. When you go there, you'll see a very big cross of Balikudembe and another big cross of Baze Koketa. Balikudembe is a patron for politicians and the chiefs. Baze Koketa is a patron for bankers, 
treasurers and those in charge of finances. They continue the route where there is a place called Odi Kampala. Matthias Mulumba refused to walk. Mulumba said, I'm not going anywhere. Where are you taking me? At Namugongo, you are going to kill me. Why don't you kill me here? I'm not going anywhere. Kill me here. They thought Mulumba was stubborn to refuse to come here. They cut off his lips. They cut off his hands. They cut off his legs. They skinned him. Dogs ate him. He was the one who suffered the most. A very brutal and lingering death. Where they killed Matthias Mulumba, there is a church called St. Matthias Mulumba, or the Kampala. That's where they killed Matthias Mulumba. They proceeded the route where there is a place called Kamuli, Lubao. Gonza, Gonza collapsed. You know, when they were coming, they tied them with the chains. So Gonza, Gonza came on limping, 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 wasting their time. They speared him. And left him there for the for, for, for the wild animals to eat. Then the rest reached here at Namugongo because this was their destination and it was an extrusion ground. When they reached at Namugongo, they were put in prison. They started collecting firewood. Namugongo was an extrusion site in the kingdom of Uganda. Namugongo was a killing site. This is where they were killing criminals, grave offenders, who were committing serious offenses in Uganda. And there are three categories of people who are killed here at Namugongo. The princes, the princesses, the chiefs, and all those criminals who feared to join the king when he was attacking other kingdoms. All those sentenced king to, to death by the king, they were killed at Namugongo. So even the Uganda martyrs, they are in these third categories of commoners who refused to leave Christianity. When the king told them to leave Christianity and they said we cannot leave, so the king regarded them as very bad people who were supposed to be burnt alive at Namugongo. So when they looked at Namugongo, they were made to collect firewood and the fire got ready. Some were in prison, some were collecting firewood together with the executioners. So the fire got ready on the 2nd of June. And on that 2nd of June, when the fire got red, the whole night they were drumming, drums of death. The wombs of their mothers are going to suffer. We are going to, to, we are going to burn them like grass. The wombs of their mothers are going to suffer. They were drumming, they were dancing, they were taking local blue, tonto, the whole night. Then, as they were doing that, one of the extrusioners, I mean one of the martyrs, called Mbaga, to Zinde, was the nephew of the chief executioner, Mukajanga. Mukajanga was the chief executioner. So Mukajanga told his nephew, Mbaga to Zinde, you boy escape. I will hide you. Why do you want to die for nothing? Have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen Jesus? You are going to die for nothing. The boy said, leave me alone. I have to die. I'm going in heaven. I will not escape. He convinced him to escape. He refused. They took him where the mother was staying, six kilometers away from here in a place, a village called Buwat. The mother was staying there together with the relatives. They convinced Mbaga to escape. Mbaga said, I'm not going to escape. I have to die. I'm going in heaven. See, these people had strong faith. You can imagine your mother crying, hiding you, your relatives, your sisters, all. And you said, no, I'm not going to hide. I have to die. I'm going in heaven. So when he refused to escape, he was brought back on the 3rd of June, early in the morning. The chief executioner convinced him to escape. The boy said, no, leave me alone. I have to die. I'm going in heaven. So when he refused to escape, Mukajanga, his uncle, told the junior scholar, hit him on the head so that they can burn him when he's dead. How can my nephew be burnt alive when I'm looking? He will die in pain and to hurt me. Kill, kill him first so that they can burn him. So Mbaga to Zinde was hit on the head. He died. Then they put him on fire with the majority were still alive. On the 3rd of June, 1886, 36 years ago. And Mbaga to Zinde is the patron for seminarians, novices, those in vocations, the patron. Um, Gonza Gonza is the patron for prisoners and those who are afflicted. And the that one was killed at Odi Kampala, Matia Mulumba. 
is a patron for married people. And he, those three were killed at Munyonyo. Dennis Sebugwao is a patron for squires, singers, and musicians. And then Posiano Ngondu, a patron for, for, for soldiers, policemen, and militia. And uh, Andrew Kagwa is a patron for catechists and the teachers. So, to go to take you back, now, when Mbaga Tuzinde refused to escape, and his uncle Mukajanga, the chief executioner, said, hit him on the head. He was, he, he, he was hit on the head, but not exactly here, where we are. He was taken a kilometer away from here, where the protesters constructed their shrine. But here, where we are on that very day, it was around midday on the 3rd of June. It was around midday on Thursday, on the 3rd of June, 1886. A man known as Senkole tried Charles Rwanga, the leader of the Uganda Martyrs, on a tree called the Egrikiti, a local tree called the Egrikiti, and burnt him where exactly the altar is where the basilica is. That's where exactly Charles Ruanga was burnt by St. on the 3rd of June. He told him, you are burning me, but it is as if you are pouring water over my body. You have not even tied me properly. Leave me. I tie myself so that you can burn me. God tell the king, he has killed me for nothing. Let him repent. If he does not repent, I'll be his accuser before God. So where the altar is, is the exact place where Charles Ruanga was martyred, where the shrine is. And 12 Catholics, 13 Protestants were taken a kilometer away and burnt where the Anglican shrine is, where the museum is, on the 3rd of June, 1886. That's why you see every 3rd of June, a million people plus come to Namugongo. People walk on foot from Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, the other sea, Burundi, different parts of Uganda, people walk to this place, Namugongo, not because they don't have money, but to make a pilgrimage. And you know, pilgrimage is a holy journey to a holy place. So this is a holy place. So when they come here, mass is done down at the lake. We don't have mass in the basilica. How old were the martyrs? The martyrs were between 14 and 50 years. The youngest being Hizito, 14 years, and the oldest being Matthias Mulumba, 50 years. So what was the reaction of the people around when all this was happening, when they were watching them being brought all the way from Munyonyo to, to Owino, to Old Kampala, to Kamuli, until they got what was the reaction of the population? You see, at that time, if you are sentenced to death by the king, nobody could come near you. Because you are regarded as a very bad person. Now in the case of the Uganda martyrs, there, there, there was no reaction. Their relatives could not react. They, could not, they were not even buried. Because at that time, if you were seen burying them, you were killed. They were regarded, just like now, if they get to you, that you were rebel. Your relatives will not see you. They will keep quiet. Much as they agree, but they will, they will not, the reaction will be silent. So the Uganda martyrs, since they were sentenced to death by the king, people feared even to react. Because at that time, they were regarded as very bad people who disobeyed the king. So nobody could do. And the king does nothing wrong. King is ever right. So when you, you cannot criticize a king that he has done bad to kill these Christians. So the reaction was silent. As Christians, what do we learn from the death of these martyrs? What we learn from the death of the Uganda martyrs is to have stronger faith in God, to emulate them to attain sainthood as they are. So these were people like us, they were black like us, they were living here in the same environment we are, they were young, they were married, they were youth, so they teach us that we can also put our faith in action and become saints. In that way, we shall be strengthening our faith. We learn a lot from them. Good morals, obedience. What does it matter as we're obedient? 
okay? They were hard working. We learned all those good virtues from them they had. When were these matters canonized? The Uganda matters, first and foremost, they, were, they became venerables. In 1912, during the reign of Pope Leo the, the third. Then they were beatified in, 19, in 1920 during the reign of Pope Benedict the 15th after performing some miracles. Again they were canonized on the 18th of October 1964 in the Vatican by Pope Paul the 6th. But before he canonized them they also performed some miracles. They cured the nuns, the sisters who are going to suffer, who are going to die, who are suffering of bubonic plague. There was a bubonic plague in the local language, we call it Kawumpuri. It was here in the central, in the Uganda, and it killed so many people, there was no cure. One of the sisters at Lubaga lost a brother. She went for burial, but when she was there, she contracted the bubonic plague. When she came back at Lubaga, she died in the convent. Only two sisters buried her. Even those sisters who buried her, they also contracted the disease. So, the, the, the bishop at that time, called Bishop Mitchell, who was at Lubaga, together with the parish priest called the governor, who later became a bishop, announced a novena. A novena is a a prayer, an intention for 90 days was a particular intention. So they were praying that Uganda matters, if you are in heaven, save us and you are our sisters. Putting the relics, putting the bones, the remains of the Uganda matters on the bed of the, on the bed of the sisters. So, the novena went for three days. The sisters got healed miraculously. That's the miracle the church based on to proclaim the Uganda matter since on the 18th of October 1964 in the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica. And that's the first time African drums were beaten in the Vatican, in the church. This is also the time when women were allowed to sing in the choir and they were sisters. And the seminarians were in those countries on study who are, who, are, who are studying abroad in those countries, composed the choir. And the man called Chagambi Dua from Masaka com went with the choir, composed the choir. And that's the time we first heard these songs, Kaloli Wanga, praising Kaloli Wanga. Kaloli Wanga, who no more than you are man, he to Muli no Mugabiro Mujasuje, Katundayeva Sulu, no go to what day. And then there's another song they composed of the youngest matter, Kizito. Kizito Mota Yo Wange, Kizito Musomi, Mwana Wembu Gagwembita, Kizito Musomi Omaga, Omaganza Atalawa. That's the first time those songs were sung in the Vatican. So that's the miracle. And the Pope ordered that these people should be remembered every 3rd of June. So that's why you should remember them every 3rd of June. And they became international for that matter. After being canonized, they became international. And even Uganda was known world over. You see, it was during the Vatican Council too. There were so many bishops over 2,000 in attendance when the Uganda matters were canonized. So the Uganda matters became international. For that matter, three popes visited Uganda. The first pope to land on the continent of Africa came here, in Uganda. And he was here on the 2nd of August, 1969. The second pope also came on the 7th of Feb, 1993. That was John Paul II. And Pope Francis was here on the 28th of November, 2015. So three popes, the only country in Africa, which has been visited by three popes is Uganda, because of the Uganda matters. And there are some people who know Uganda because of the Uganda matters. So these people have marketed our country. And so many miracles continue to happen. Even as I talk, people come and testify. I prayed through the Uganda matters and I was healed. I prayed through the Uganda matters and I received my prayer. People come to give 
thanks. So the Uganda martyrs made miracles before they were colonized and they are still making miracles. And they are recognized worldwide. People know Namugongo more than other parts. Namugongo is known. Uganda is known because of the Uganda martyrs. The place has developed because of the Uganda martyrs. So it's not only spiritual. Because of the Uganda martyrs, the, the, the land here has appreciated. The place is now urbanized because of the Uganda martyrs. So many people want to be associated with Namugongo. So they come and settle around and there are so many people here. The population is high. And the, the place is, is now developing because of the Uganda martyrs. And you see, because of that, they, they constructed a national shrine. Very big, giant shrine called the Uganda Martyrs Catholic Shrine in Amugongo. That shrine, the shrine is a place of worship, but at the same time, a church where people go for pilgrimage. So, in 1935, the Miru Hiru Fathers came and started a, a mission, a parish, in this very place where they burned the Uganda Martyrs, cutting it from Unsambia Parish. This was a substation of Unsa outstation of Unsambia Parish. So in 1935, the Miruhiru fathers came and started constructing a parish. They put a smaller church, which was demolished in 1967. Cardinal Sobuga was the author of the project which started the shrine, which is there. He started it in 1967 and was completed in 1975. It stands on 22 pillars representing the 22 Catholic martyrs. And it is circular, depicting African traditional hearts. Accommodation is 1,000. We have masses there every day. Three masses, every Sunday, five masses. The door of the martyrs, the whole compound becomes a church. And we have, in the compound, we have water. Christians believe it is holy water. Where all the masses conducted on big occasions, like a martyrs, there is a smaller lake. So people believe it is holy water. When they come here, some wash in their face, their face some tack, some carry, it depends on your faith. All people out there, I encourage you to come and visit the Uganda Martyrs Catholic Shrine. Come and make a pilgrimage and receive the blessings of the Uganda Martyrs. The Uganda Martyrs have made a lot of miracles. People come back and testify, give thanksgiving. Don't miss out. Now we are nearing Martyrs Day. Come and sanctify yourself. Come and renew your faith. Come and get emulation. You come and emulate the Uganda martyrs. In doing so, your accounts in heaven will be credited when you don't know. So don't miss out. Come to the Uganda martyrs. Have a prayer. Have the Uganda martyrs intercede for you. So, I encourage you to come in big numbers and see and pray and learn more about the Uganda matters. You are very lucky, especially people who are near, people who are in Uganda. You are lucky that we have the Uganda matters. There are so many countries in Africa who don't have even a cent. But for us, we have more than 20 cents. That is a big, big, big chance for us use them to attain sainthood. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for paying attention. Thank you for coming. Come again. My name, once again, is Ben Tenua, in charge of the pilgrims and tourists at the Uganda Matters Catholic Shrine. I thank you.